you know, is it just me or do you feel like sometimes there's a bigger global initiative push for electric vehicles? Like of all things, electric vehicles seem to be this like global agenda. Everyone must have an electric vehicle by 2035. And I'm sure you've heard research that starts off with, you know, in country X, approximately one quarter of greenhouse gas emissions come from the transportation sector. A broader adoption of electric vehicles could lead to a significant reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and contribute to a new sustainable transport system. And it's almost like this flippant way of talking about such a a, a very uh, deep topic. You know, this connection between broader adoption of electric vehicles and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Great for whatever political message you're sending, but the question remains about the long-term impact. I can't imagine, you know, with let's say 80 to 90 percent of us choosing EVs, the, 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 the demand on cobalt, and nobody wants to know what cobalt mining looks like, Um, Some really good authors have have shed light on this. But also, you know, what happens to these batteries? They're they're tossed into landfills. I don't think they're recyclable. In fact, I strongly doubt that they're recyclable. I could be wrong on that. But we have to remember, EVs don't produce the same functionality that uh, internal combustion engines do. An internal combustion engine vehicle will take you to work, pick up your kids, take you to the cottage, go for long drives, um, you know, haul loads, large loads if you need, and it'll and you can gas up within a few seconds to a few minutes and you're good. You're back on your way and gas stations are everywhere. Electric vehicles cost more. They're about 20 to 30 percent more, generally speaking. In some cases, much more, depending on the type of brand you're going for. Um, they you need public charging everywhere because in the colder months, the batteries don't hold their charge, and that's been very well documented. Um, the batteries themselves over time lose the charge um, and don't charge fully, uh, don't give you the same range they once did. Again, very well documented for seven and eight year old Teslas now. The range does go down. Um, and they. So the range is taking a hit. You know, uh, again, I've covered this so much, but uh, electric vehicle pickup trucks, when you put their max load on them and they and you tow with it, the battery, <laughs> the range goes down to like double digits in some cases. Like it goes down dramatically. Um, and, you know, you combine all these things and the the functionality just isn't there with internal combustion engine vehicles. So... I find it fascinating that governments would mandate a car that produces less functionality for the consumer and costs more to be mandated. I mean, we haven't even talked about, you know, the the semi pickup trucks. I mean, there's no way that a, a Tesla semi will get the same range in the winter going uphill, you know, through Alberta that an internal combustion engine, a diesel-powered uh, 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 semi-truck will. It's just, it's just not possible. It's just not possible. And the only way that could be possible is if there's just a ton of... The truck would have to have more batteries on it than anything, than actual cargo. And I'm not trying to be flippant about this, but that is the truth. And beyond the the the, the physics and the functionality piece comes with this other challenge. And it's what I consider the shiny new object syndrome, right? It's like, we don't want to improve old technology. We want something new. And you see this everywhere, right? Like nobody wants, I shouldn't say nobody. Some people don't want to work with what they have. They want something new, something totally new, something outrageously new. Um, You know, in the podcast world, it's like, microphones and cameras and lighting and let's get the best 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 of everything and it's like but what if your content sucks <laughs> a camera won't make you a better 
content producer. You know, lighting won't make you a better content producer. And I feel the same is true here. Instead of looking at the real impacts of, um, you know, making internal combustion engines more efficient, less heat loss, etc., you know, more hybrid technologies, we're throwing the, the baby out with the bathwater and saying, no, nope, we're just going right to electric. Again, despite the fact that it costs more and loses functionality because its functionality just isn't there. Now, some might say that this is like conspiratorial, you know, this idea of a global agenda is just wrong on so many levels. But I wanted to let you show, share with you, you know, that it's, it's not just me, it's everywhere. Honda makes a massive deal to build a multi-billion dollar electric vehicle factory in Ontario. And, you know, it goes into details. The details will be shared Thursday, tomorrow, April 25th. But when you go through it, look right here, uh, Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, says, over the past three years alone, we've attracted over $28 billion in auto and EV investments. And folks, stay tuned. This is Premier Ford telling the First Nations Major Projects Coalition on Monday. So billions, tens of billions of dollars are being pumped into electric vehicle manufacturing, battery technologies, etc. throughout Ontario, Quebec, other provinces. Guess what? Consumers aren't choosing electric vehicles. They're just not. There's nothing that consumers are doing to there's sorry, there's there's no push that consumers are making for EVs in Canada. I mean, maybe there was an initial push, but right now there's less and less of a push um, by consumers to choose EVs. They're just not doing that. And it's for the reasons I mentioned. The functionality isn't there, but primarily the cost is number one. And so, again, the question remains, why would governments push a vehicle that does not function as well and costs more and mandate that same vehicle? It, it just defies all I all, like it just defies everything. But the last thing I want to say about this is that, to me, you know, this reminds me so much of a global agenda. Now, when people say global agenda, I think what they mean is this. You can go to any developed nation and there's five or six major public policies that you will say, oh, well, that's no different than it is in Canada or in the United States. Oh, they're adopting EVs. Oh, that's the same as Canada, the United States. The similarities on these big topics are a lot. You know, if you were to travel to Europe, um, Australia, you would probably find the exact or almost exact policy objective for adopting electric vehicles. That's a bit odd because we're talking about jurisdictions with very different uh, auto manufacturing, sorry, uh, car demands, types of car demands, et cetera, et cetera. And here we have unanimous consent on what the future holds for electric vehicle adoption. I find that odd. And I think a lot of people do as well. So I do think there's a global push for EVs. I think they hide behind the rubric of saving the environment. Time will tell. I don't think it'll make as big a difference as, as a lot of what these uh, uh, um, people are saying. I don't think so. And I think that Pushing a vehicle that has less functionality, costs more, is just absurd. And the fact that so many jurisdictions, almost all jurisdictions in the G7 and G20, have similar policies on EV adoption lets me know that everybody is missing the obvious sign. These cars are not being something, are not being selected by consumers. Consumers don't want electric vehicles by and large. And Tesla's finding that out right now. So I think we need to just wake up a little bit and, and just call, email our MPs, MPPs, our ministers, our prime ministers, our presidents, and say, what are you doing? We don't want this. These cars are expensive. We have no idea what the life lifespan is. There's tons of issues with many EVs. If you slightly damage the underside of your EV, you could damage the battery. That could lead to a fire. I mean, the, the list of risks are actually quite large. 
there are fire departments saying it, it takes hundreds of thousands of liters in some cases to put out an EV fire. Why don't we talk about that? I mean, I know they're rare, but that's still a consideration, especially considering people will be charging these in their homes. Um, there's a lot that the public policymakers and governments need to work out. They should temper their expectations because consumers will not choose EVs to save the environment. Consumers care about one thing, and that is their wallets. And right now, with inflation and interest rates, that's the focus. So to me, it's odd that there's still such a strong push for this when clearly consumers just aren't choosing electric vehicles. But let me know what you think in the comment section below.